Hello programmers. We are starting a brand new tutorial series for Spring Framework. In this video, we will cover some basic details theoretically and get to know more about the best Java framework developed. So what exactly Spring is and why it has become one of the most popular framework in Java? Spring Framework provides a comprehensive programming and configuration model for modern Java-based enterprise applications on any kind of development platform. Spring is indeed a framework that provides the required plumbing for an application so that you can focus on user needs that you are responsible for. Spring is also an open source project currently owned by VMware. The power of Spring really starts with its community. The core committers are all fantastic developers and the community only makes them better. They are all very active in answering questions, responding to the bugs and sharing their opinion on how to use Spring in the most effective way. Spring was and still is to a large part still focused on enterprise abstractions. Spring is fully capable of supporting internet focused applications. In the dawn of microservices architecture, where Java is the language of choice, Spring really shines with the Spring Boot and embedded application servers. Spring is really lightweight. I know many of you will not agree on that comment, but if we look at the feature set Spring provides and the way projects are broken apart to optimize the workflows, it really is a lightweight framework. Consider especially traditional JEE implementations, formerly known as Java Enterprise Edition. The Spring packaging and abstractions are much smaller. Spring is also very modest. If you build your applications using best practices and current recommendation strategies, you can dramatically reduce the dependency on imports from the Spring catalog. Through the use of abstractions and facades, you can actually keep your business logic completely intact while not requiring any Spring imports in those class files. So let's talk about the most popular use case for Spring, which is enterprise itself. With Spring, especially Spring Boot, there is no need for heavy application servers. Even if you don't use Spring Boot, Tomcat is sufficient to run your packaged WAR files. However, most users today are building the executable files with the app server embedded into it. Spring achieves much of the abstraction from the heavy enterprise system APIs that come with JEE. That doesn't mean that you don't have the access to the technologies which are older like JMS. You just abstract them away from the application server. By leveraging this in your ecosystem, your code is simpler, but so is your operational burden. By leveraging dedicated system for each component instead of large application which is doing everything, you make your code easier to distribute and scale as well. Now I have mentioned business logic a lot already, but it's a key success factor for Spring. Think of how complex and repetitive it is to set up a simple JDBC connection. You have to build a query, execute it, and then read the result into object, all while shutting down the result set in the connection as well. Now repeat that for every database query in your application. This makes your code dirty with copy and paste that is error prone to. With Spring, this just goes away. The framework handles it for you. So your code is just business logic and ultimately that is what you really care about. Another big benefit of Spring is dependency injection aspect. Spring manages all your runtime dependencies by allowing the framework to maintain those objects so you don't have to deal with the creation and maintenance. This greatly decreases the complexity of your code, which of course improves the maintainability. It also helps you avoid some of the most common issues around memory management that can creep into your Java application, even though it has automatic garbage collection. With Spring, you create those objects only once. This is done either through configuration of the application context or through formal object creation. At the point your object is configured and is maintained by the application context until the application ends. Now let's see what are the components of Spring Framework Runtime. We have Spring Core Container that contains core component. Then we have Beans, Context and Expression Language. On top of that we have Aspect Oriented Programming named as AOP. Then we have Aspects and Instrumentation. 
To access the database, we have JDBC, ORM, JMS, and transactions component. Also, for the web related applications, we have MVC, Web Servlet, Portlet, and Struts as components of Spring Framework Runtime. That's it for the basic introduction part. Next, we will see what is IOC, Inversion of Control, and Dependency Injection. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And please do comment in case of any suggestions. Thanks for watching. See you next time.